Yes, we're kicking off this Friday edition of the Sportsmax Zone on the topic of CONCACAF Nations League football. Let's first see how the results were on Thursday. Many of the matches early evening into the night. Suriname won one with Haiti. Grenada beaten at home 4-1 by Jamaica. Cuba and Honduras goalless. That's in League A. In League B, St. Kitts and Nevis winning a five-goal game over St. Martin. That's Dutch St. Martin. St. Lucia winning 2-1 over Guadeloupe. A top-of-the-table clash there. And in League C, the leaders, Dominica, were held 1-1 by the British Virgin Islands. And Bonaire got by Anguilla by two goals to nil. Now the Reggae Boys became the first CONCACAF Nations League A team to secure their spot in the quarterfinals with their 4-1 win away to Grenada on Thursday. Goals by Romario Williams, Shamar Nicholson, Damari Gray and Bobby Reed punctuated a good attacking performance against the Spites Boys, uh, which are rooted to the bottom of Group B. Joining us on set to break down the win and performance, ace football analyst Liget Williams. Four goals yesterday, uh, Lige, for the Jamaican team. I suspect that coach Hal Grimson would be reasonably pleased, especially since he didn't start some of his first team players. Captain Andre Blake was on the bench and Leon Bailey came off the bench. Yeah, there's a lot of rotation in the Jamaican team. So I think Hal Grimson, coach Hal Grimson would be pleased that they ended up getting the win. But I, I do think that there was a lot to be, there's a lot left to be desired from the Jamaican team. I'm, I'm not quite sure what it is. I'm not quite sure if the Jamaican team are sponsored by Prestige or sponsored by any other donut company. But for some reason, their midfield is always empty. It's always like a hole. I'm not quite sure. So often we see three Jamaican players at the back and then the, the rest of the seven players in the attacking third. So I'm not quite sure what the solution to that can be because at first I thought the Jamaican team were just lacking maybe a... a, a, a a type of midfielder to drop and take responsibility, but any changes, we saw some changes in there last night, and so far during Hal Grimson's reign, I've seen nothing to indicate that Jamaica has that type of midfielder. Maybe we'll, we will, uh, Jamaica will acquire it somewhere, but that's what I'm most upset about from the performance, and I know that Jamaica won the game, so these negative comments will come out of nowhere for some people, but in my estimation, I don't really look at the results. I know that Jamaica are a better team than Grenada, Haiti, any of the other teams yeah. in our group. What I want to see is a Jamaican team putting their foot down and putting a dominant performance on the field. That's not what we saw yesterday. Jamaica did get the win, so that's something to be happy about. Jamaica did are in the quarterfinals, that's something to be happy about. But generally, there are a lot of problems that need to be fixed, and I don't see how they're going to be fixed with this current crop of players. Yeah, I got the feeling that because the Haiti game is so close to the Grenada game, and Haiti would be considered a tougher opposition for Coach Hal Grimson than the Grenadians are, uh, there may be more focus on ensuring that the team peaks for Sunday's game against Haiti and uh, not so much against the Grenadians. I'm not sure what you think about that. I'm sure that went into the thinking of the coaching staff, and I, I think that the team will look much better against Haiti. So, yes... I agree with you in terms of the rotation, especially the players that we saw come off of the bench or did not play whatsoever. So, but we have seen this Jamaican team against Haiti, and Haiti caused Jamaica a lot of problems, I think, and the problems that they caused us. Although I do think that Haiti performance that Jamaica put on in our last game before the, the, this round, I do think that that was Jamaica's best performance of the Nations League so far although that they didn't get the win. And I know that's what a lot of people look at because against Honduras, when Jamaica played woefully, we won, so I didn't hear anyone saying anything. Against Grenada, we scored, Jamaica scored four goals. We didn't play well, and I'm not hearing anyone say anything. But then in the game where Jamaica drew two all, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing all sorts of... Love criticism. Of, stop looking at the result. Focus on the performance. Yeah, but, but, but to be fair, any sport is about result. Yes. I understand that there is a process and Hal Grimson is looking at building this team to some higher height. So I understand the point you're making, but sport is about results. Yes, sir, Lance. But results, uh, I've said this multiple times on the show also, repeated quality actions lead to repeated success. If you're going to constantly fall into a perpetual trap or zone of just trying to eco out results, eventually the law of averages will always catch up on you. 
And that's what's happening or is going to happen with some of these teams. We see it with the reggae girls as well. The reggae girls go to tournaments, right? Play defensive football, try and eke out results. And they did that successfully. But who is to say if they were to get that same exact group on another day, all of those teams would slap them around? Because if you're not going to engage and have control over games, that's what's going to happen. And in that Grenada game last night, Jamaica, at, for most of the game, because of a lack of midfield presence, could not have control over the game. Grenada, it was a, I hate ping pong games. It's football we're, we're watching. We're not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be a tennis game. I know Ricardo isn't here. Maybe he loves the tennis games. I don't think but, he does actually, but, but go ahead, yeah. But I, I certainly don't like it in <laughs> he this He loves aspect. tennis, but he doesn't, love the, he doesn't he like the tennis football. game in football. <laughs> this back and forth thing. We have the superior players. I know football isn't solely played on paper, but Jamaica has the superior players. We should have a midfield structure, I think, to just take this thing out of games and, and just control it better. The, the game seemed too much on edge at many times, especially before the third goal was scored. Yeah, should we have kept a clean sheet? Well, I think that comes down as well to what I was saying in terms of a, a lack of control. A lack of con a control doesn't only mean keeping the ball, it's also marshalling or controlling when the opposition can come into your final third. And Jamaica, I'm not going to say Jamaica are a bad defensive team. They've actually improved a lot, I think, under coach Hal Grimson, but everything comes from the midfield. As Mariah would know, you're, you're very familiar with this type of music. In the engine room, that is the midfield. You get me? And that's what we need. We need more controllers. Jamaica need more controllers in that midfield and that is our way forward. We have excellent attackers. I think Hal Grimson has a good enough defensive structure. We have seen that with his previous regimes. But until we get, until Jamaica get that midfield structure, I think Jamaica is always going to struggle against better opposition. And when we play those better opposition, we'll be playing them in tournaments that matter. Yeah, Bobby Reed, 87th minute goal. How was he as captain for you? I, I think from what I've seen, Jamaica, the, the, the team respects Bobby Reed a lot. A lot of people might say, oh, oh why didn't you give it to... Uh, as someone say, why, why didn't Jamaica give it to Demari Gray? I, I think a lot of captaincy comes down to things that we don't see personally. And I think, judging what I have seen from the Jamaican team, I've gone to a couple of training sessions as well, I think that the Jamaican team respect Bobby Reed a lot. He's one of the um, foreign players, so to speak, that have come in and really integrated with the team well. So I, I think he was a decent choice as captain, and I think his work rate on the pitch shows that as well and I think he was a, a, a decent he had a decent performance and yeah I think Bobby was a good captain show. Speaking of decent performance Shamar Nicholson he is Jamaica's all-time leading goal scorer in the CONCACAF Nations League with five goals rate his performance and how he has been suiting up for Jamaica. You know one of the last times I came on this show I, I had a rousing dis debate discussion about Shamar Nicholson and I think last night pretty much summed up what, I was, what I've always been trying to say about Shamar Nicholson. Give him chances. Not every striker is going to score with two chances and convert one. A 50% conversion rate, that, is, that would put you into Van Basten territory, put you into Gerd Muller territory. That is not what most strikers in the world are. Hurricane's best conversion rate of his career, Hurricane, one of the best strikers of all time, his best conversion rate is 62.3%. That is, and that is an elite, elite striker. We have to understand what we have, right? And I would much prefer, I'm not saying to bench Antonio or anything like that, yeah. but I would much prefer if Jamaica were to get a system to get their striker getting a lot of chances and not have them feeding off scraps like Antonio is adept at doing so that we can have a more potent attack at times. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question for you about the Grenada performance, but quickly, you just complained about the midfield and how... Um, unresponsive it was um, to, to, to the game situations. Karoy Anderson, the 19-year-old, um, getting on as a substitute last night. What did you make of his performance? Give him a rating, 1 out of 10. Based on the time he was on the pitch, I think I would give him like a 6 or a 7. Yes. Didn't impact the game too much, but I saw the flashes of a quality player. I have been following my child and actually yeah. didn't know too much that he was going to play for Jamaica up until I actually just heard about him as a quality player. So 
I think at that age, I think if Jamaica continue to groom him properly, yeah. I think that he can have a big impact for us in the midfield. Okay. You just suggested a few minutes ago that when the score was 2-1, Jamaica looked a little bit vulnerable. Um, assess Grenada for me, because I, at that point I agree with you. I think at 2-1, Grenada looked as if they could have gotten back into the game fully. Um, they had chances to score and didn't. How do you think the Grenadians did? I think Grenada played much better than I expected and I assume many Jamaicans would have expected them to play as well because I, I, I think for some reason Jamaican fans have a superiority and an, insu uh, and an insuperior complex. So I, I think Grenada played really well but I think a lot of what Grenada did well, we allowed, Jamaica allowed them to do it, right? So I mentioned just not having control so it created the ping pong effect Grenada held their strikers really high, their attackers really high. So when the ball was progressed, they, were, they always had options on the flank. And their wingers, I think, did a really good job of taking was, on our full I, I was about to say that because you're saying Jamaica allowed them yeah. in, in moments. But there were times their wingers, with their good ball handling skills, gave the Jamaican flank defenders a hell of a time. Yeah, but I think if our midfield was more present, yes. then one of the defensive midfielders could shuttle out. And instead of making it a 1v1 all the time, Jamaica could have a 2v1 and handle situations better. Yeah. It's never good to leave a defender on an island with a tricky attacker. That, the, it's, uh, it's better to be proactive than reactive. And a, def and a defender in that sense is yeah. always yeah. going to be reactive. So, yeah, it's just problems that I think Jamaica caused on themselves. Yeah. Hopefully, I am being hopeful because... Although I'm bashing the performance, we got the win. So that's what really matters in the grand scheme of things. But I'm being hopeful that in the future, I'm going to see some improvement from what we try to do against better opposition. Okay, yeah. thanks, Liz. Always great having you on the Sports Mike Zone talking football. Uh, remember that tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time, 8 o'clock in Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago taking on Guatemala. And that's the CONCACAF Nations League continuing on Sports Max channels. Back with more. Football after the break.